Our next speaker is Claudia Giao, very well known in the Python community. She is now um, the organizer of Pay Ladies Mother. Yeah. Okay. And she's a data scientist in kernel analytics. Awesome. And uh, she uh, today will give you a talk about machine learning to know if you are coming. Okay. Your turn. Okay, thank you very thank much. You Okay, thank you very much for coming. I know some of my colleagues are doing nice talks at the same time, so thank you. I don't blame the other ones that not come. And today, and thank you also for the organiza organization because they did a great job today. Um, and um, Claudia, as uh, Lois said, I am working at Kernel Analytics. It is a data science company, consulting company and I'm working there as senior data scientist. Just as disclaimer, the, if you have not noticed, this is our R language talk. So Python exclusive people, don't leave the room. If there's no code inside, you can do the same in scikit-learn. It, it's going to be interesting, so please don't leave. Give me a chance. Well, I'm going to introduce you a business case we developed uh, three months ago. It is for a hotel company. They are asking yourself how they can predict the translation rate for these 80 destinations. We are going to talk about data, about being able at the beginning are our feature engineering, and also the methodology and our best results. And the last point is, is uh, some ethic related. Well, as I said, the main goal is to estimate the volume of cancellations by date and photo in this photo chain. Used to show you some stats, they have uh, one reservation each two minutes, more than 7,000 clients, 18, 80 destinations, the, they are mainly premium resorts, beach resorts in Punta Cana, that kind of, of accommodations, and they have a high percentage of cancellation and no so. Just to make it clear at the beginning, we are talking about cancellation when the guest voluntary cancel previous the check-in date and also the no shows when they don't appear at the hotel and the room is empty at the check-in room at the check-in date. So and uh, we also have another uh, problem as you can imagine we have High seasonality, people travel all summer and Christmas for holidays. So it, it, it could be also a problem for the uh, prediction. Well, uh, about the mm, beginning approach, we know this is a classification, binary classification problem. Success or unsuccess. Success, obviously, the guests come to the hotel on date and unsuccess, cancellation, and no so. We have used all the data to be able to guess the reservation, the stay, how many nights, how many people are coming, and also some three-party data resources that I'm going to introduce you after. Mm, there were three main chan challenges. Uh, the first one, of course, is to understand the, the cancellation behavior when and how and why people cancel their holidays and also be able to anticipate the cancellation. Of course, our clients want to optimize their incomes, want to earn more money and don't want to have a half empty hotel at August. So they, they would like to anticipate that uh, behavior and be able to release that uh, reservations to other clients. And the third one was the on-premise deployment. This is why the project was developed on our language, and it is not a problem. And first, if we see the chart on your right, you can see on the x-axis the days between the booking day, the reservation date, and the cancellation or check-in date. These ones on the left are the short-term reservation, people that don't anticipate the holidays, just three weeks before they book a, a room. And in, ye in yellow you can see the cancellations and no show. And take, take into account that uh, in the closest date, 
in the closest days to the uh, reservation date, there are so much more cancellations. This is why the this is because the cancellation policy, the penalties, people can cancel without penalties in the first 24 hours. About the data, if you see that chart, you can some conclude that time is important. People anticipate or not the holidays. People wait until a best offer. When you book a, a hotel in booking.com, you probably take the first option and if you see one better two weeks after, you can sell the first one and then take the second one. I'm pretty sure you have done that. I'm, I'm also. And there are some um, reservation characteristics, customer characteristics that also affects the cancellation behavior. If you are traveling uh, because of holidays or because of soft business, if you are traveling um, because of your wedding, you are on honeymoon, you probably won't cancel the reservation, just probably. The payment, if you are going to pay before the, the stay or after, or after or when you come, how many nights are you going to stay, when did you make the, the reservation, and, and the kind of, if it is premium or not. Okay, we also do so much feature engineering. We are trying to find the country of our guests. The, that was not a feature available on our data, so we're trying to use names, show names, to uh, know where are they coming from, and also, when we more or less know where they are coming from, use that distance to uh, to build a future for the model. Also, we use the first names to identify the segment or the kind of product. That's why I said uh, the honeymoon. If you have a wedding package, probably you are a honeymoon, probably you won't cancel the reservation. Uh, um, we also do so much test mining uh, in the emails and phones to, to find the country. We detect some pattern in the reservations also. Some people um, at the same time book three hotels and then can sell two or three of them. So we um, mark the situation. And the, the last one, the pattern and great quality make a huge difference in the performance of our model. So I have some charts here. We built a travel agency classification by comparing the cancellation rate if it is below or above the mean. So in red, you can see the agencies with uh, worst uh, performance as booking or that kind of, of web companies or com comparing pages and also you have the traditional channel people who go to a local and ask for a travel and then pay for it and never can sell and we do the same with the fares that means the package you you, you contract about the methodology when when we study the data as I said, time is important. So our first approach was uh, survival analysis. I'm not pretty sure if you are, if you know uh, survival models, but they are very used on biology. The the model allows you to study and the time until an event occurs and how some variables affect. So. This, these are only the cancellation rate, and you see once again the time between booking and the checking. And you can see that in the first days, most of the reservations are going to die, to be cancelled, and then it is more stable. So if the reservation lives more than 10 years, and it is, it is anticipated more than 10 years, probably it won't be cancelled. So for this we use Ranger, you can use scikit-learn for, for doing this in, in Python. And as you can see, we don't reach very good results. If you take 
as a, it is an unbalanced data set, of course. We have 80% uh, success, 20% 20 20 cancellation. So an accuracy of 71 is not quite good, it's just uh, dropping a, a coin. If you see the kappa, it is a metric that compares our model with a naive model. We only reach 0.16, so it is a very bad model. And also, if we see the recall, the ability of the model to identify the cancellation, only 0.32. So we, this is not very good. So we move forward and we use MLR. MLR is a library which is called to be a scikit learn for R language, but it is on his first stages of development, so it has uh, some issues, especially on survival analysis. But what we do is to do HPO, hyperparameter optimization, with all the learners of Abiable, and I'll show you the best and the worst model. Then uh, here we have the survival tree, and also the cost proportional hassle model. The difference between these two. COX is a traditional survival model, very used on biology, and when they split the data set, when, they, when it split the, um, the tree, each node has the same risk to be cancelled. And that's not, not true in our, in our data set. We have people with more probability, with more risk, to cancel another, and that's why Cox proportional model was our worst trained model with MLR. The numbers, the performance metrics in here, we reach a, a little bit better than the other one, Capo, but the recall is still very low. So we, we start redoing the future engineering, thinking about what were we doing, we, we were doing wrong, what's going on with the data, and then we, we stop and think, are survival a good model for this problem? It is a kind of problem like the Titanic one. Are people dying, cancelling, and another one's staying in, in holidays and swimming on the beach? So we think a possibility was to, to take in when people do the reservation, assume a probability, and then apply a decay since they, since they are going by. So uh, in this um, conception, we, can, we are assuming that current statistics are very important, and that makes sense, because some people are more risky to consult than others. I mean, some countries, are more cancelling than others. Some channels are more cancelling than others. So that makes sense. And there were some variables, some features that explain so well how this, this is going, how, how was the decay. This is a channel. You can see the red and the blue. Blue is the, uh, I'm sorry, red is the online reservations, um, red is the but, sorry, blue is the other one. So we take this variable as the decay. So main results with, I'm sorry, I, I missed to mention that we use H, H2O. You can use it also in Python. Why don't we use the Ranger Random Forest instead H2O? Basically, it does the same, but H2O uh, has better results. So that's why we use. We were doing benchmarking all the time and, and it's to offer better results. So I'm going to summarize how the, the behavior is going and how we are going to use this for releasing or overselling a booking. So we, when we, when a guest made a reservation, we are seeing a probability and of cancellation we were all the time classificating get, uh, reservations between cancelling or success, but in production we are going to aggregate that probability because our main purpose is to know the rate. We don't know, we don't need to know who is going to cancel. We need to know 
how many people is going to cancel in a date in an auto. Hope you understand. So, with this distributed random forest model from H2O, we reach an AUC of 75, which is moderate, satisfactory. And we are going now to um, develop this model in production and use it to release reservations. Then, in this final phase of the development, we have to take risk level into account releasing reservations with more probability first than others, taking into account that are channels more riskier than others, and using the, the, the destination. I will talk about this later. So here I'm going to dip a little bit in the use of, of the different session between classification and probability aggregation. This is the classification results or performance. You have the sensibility in green, hope you can see it, this one. And especially in, in short-term reservation, we have very bad results. And um, while the, the days are passing by, we are a, a little bit better, but not so, so much. So, so good. But in this one, you can compare the aggregation between the classification, aggregation probability, classification, classificated cancellation. So in, in blue is the reality, and in green you can see the aggregation. Once again, in the three weeks or two, we are doing very bad, but after the second week we are doing much better, and also so much better than the classification one, which is the orange one. Um, what, what are we going to do with this reservation, short-term reservation? Are we going to release? Of course not. This is because you cannot react with the short-term short reservation. People do reservation for the next day. You don't have time. time to release and put it on a web and promote the reservation. So that's why we, you have the last minus discounts on, on hotels. So my tips for this are, are please, it was very good to do a first descriptive analysis of the, of the variables, trying to understand, speaking a lot with the client, how was the, the behavior of her, his clients. Choose fast and robust libraries. It doesn't mind if you are doing in on R language or on Python, but performance is very important and use trust libraries, not as this times MLR is very important. And also um, use variables about the quality. Probably you will you are going to ask me why we didn't use the cancellation penalties or the cancellation policy. Of course, it, it is a very important feature, but we don't have it. That's why we use the fair quality variable. And using, using this algorithm in production could, could make, could release a 16% of the reservation, which means more or less the 16% of the incomes. It is very important. And finally, I would like to to talk about ethics. Some of you already know that I used to be a lawyer at the beginning of my career, so I cannot resist to talk about the ethic of this. Probably when I said overselling, you are thinking about overbooking, and after that you are thinking about the United success two or, or three weeks ago on flights, and I'm going to give you some tips on how this is could be done on production. Okay. Uh, in Spain, there's no national regulation for overbooking. So if you suffer overbooking, it doesn't mean that you are unprotected. You can claim accommodation alternatives on the same destination. So you can ask for another reservation in a, a same or better category hotel. You can decline the offer and ask for a refund. And always you have the 
play, uh, the option to claim for damages. And how we, uh, the client, our client, the other chain, can use our algorithm with care. Because that, that success that happened with United affect very much the company, the image of the company, and it is very bad, I know. So they can use the, the categories of rooms. We have the first category, suits and, and bungalows and, I don't know, that kind of, of premium accommodation. And then you have the other ones, which are worst. You can release that one first, because you, you can always do an upgrade of, of, of your client. Don't release the reservation of your premium of your premium guests, of course, they are going to be mad, so mad. Uh, do, you can use the probability at the level of risk. You have, you can fix a threshold and release the, pro, the reservation which has the uh, most probability to be cancelled. And also you can work with your other in the same destination, your you other hotels in the same destination, or with other chains. It is usually happen in, in Benidorm and in cities which has a lot of uh, hotels. And they work together to <laughs> optimize, to, to minimize the, the, the damages for his guests. So, I, I'm now I'm, I'm going pretty fast. This always happening to me. So uh, sorry and thank you for your your attention. <laughs> um, and please tell me that someone take this reference. Yes. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Questions? Uh, thank you for thank you for the talk. Uh, you said that you pull all the data together by country. I mean, do you think about consider or study the different trends, splitting the data by country? Yeah, yeah, we we, we study that. Okay. So. Yeah, of course, as, as Spanish people can tend to concern more than the other one. So we use that. We we uh, we already do a previous project trying to find the nationality of the guests. Mm, this is this were used to um, supply. If you if there are coming one hundred of Russian people and you don't have that food, it would be a problem. But so we all we first know the national well, we estimate the nationality and then use it for this. Okay, but this data was all the nationalities put together. Yeah, it, it's okay. a feature. More questions? Any comment about R? Yeah. I have one comment about that. You were using the Ranger yeah. library, the mm -hmm. ML, MLR R. library, and the HTO, yeah. and you said that you can do the same thing with Scikit-Learn. Yeah. And you were saying also that uh, H2O and Ranger they were more or less in the same, yeah. but the results were better with, with mm -hmm. HTO. Yeah. With H H2O, why not use a battle tested library like, like a cycle there and trust in these libraries that maybe are not so well tested or are more? They are quite known. MLR is on his first stage of development. Oh no, it's already working, I'm sorry. Mm, H2O also is a, is a new library. We are testing that. We cannot use Python because of the environment of our talent, so that was a requirement. The question is not about R versus Python, it's something about uh, something not well tested against. Something. You think H2O is not well tested? I don't know, I know, this is my question. I think it, it, it is well tested. It, they are doing a huge effort to with this library and also we saw that in the Travis presentation is too. I think it, it is going well. MLR for me has some issues in survival. That's one of the reasons also the performance why we reject that, that library. 
But Ranger, it is a very fast library. You can see the algorithm, the random forest, or classical random forest behind programming, uh, programming in C. So it's quite fast, and it's probably used Ranger. And H2 also, but it's very quite new. Thank you. Questions, more questions, questions about Spanish, about rights, about translations. Uh, could you tell us more about the, how the weather affects uh, to the, mm. to the results? Uh, we try to use the weather, also the weather in anticipation, but unless, if the weather is not very heavy, like tornado, or it doesn't affect. You are going to Punta Cana anyway if it's raining a little bit. That was happened, and, and the feature is not in the final mode. But for example, for weekend reservations in, in the beach, or did you go to some flying rain? They are far away destination, mainly. Okay. It, is, it is not a national company. It is an international company in most of the um, of the resorts and on the Caribbean. Uh, so okay. people fly from Europe to Mexico anyway. Mm -hmm. Stay a bit. More no questions? Questions? Don't be shy. I understand from your explanation that you have to do it in R rather than in Python. Mm -hmm. Based on your experience with R, is there any advantage of using R in that kind of exercise? Especially from my personal experience, for me, is faster R for prototyping, but it has some issues in production. Uh, I'm, I'm talking exclusively from my personal experience. I'm pretty fast doing a prototype in, in two days and things are going are working more or less. But if you have to develop this in production and you can choose, uh, that, that is important. If you are in a team which people can program both in Python and R, that I will choose Python. But it's only my, my personal experience. Uh, hello, my question is a bit related to that one. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you said you tried like three different things, you know, mm -hmm. three, three different ways to, to get to the results. Is that not inefficient in some way, you know, for the client? Because the client has to wait to you get res the results. You know, how, how much time does it take for you, or it depends on the project, you know, in terms of your company, like how do you assure to your client that you're going to deliver the results in you know, that mm -hmm. much time? The training time was less than 20 minutes, I think. We can do the training every day if, if, the, if, we, if it is a, it's an option, if you, if you want to. And the prediction was less than um, two minutes. Or, um, so you can use real time, but the data was not real time. So. Yeah, the questions? Our bottleneck was mainly the database, not the programming language. Is big data a problem with data or? I don't think it is with data. It's not big data. It's not big data. It's small data. Not tiny data, but not big Well, it's, it's not really related to the code, but since you presented this amazing study, I was just wondering what's your feeling about the confidence of, of the client about this kind of studies? Because at the end, there are mm -hmm. hotel managers, they know about uh, beach and swimming pools and everything, open bar. <laughs> but the thing is, this is just data numbers. So, what's your feeling about mm -hmm. when you, you gave the study? They said, okay, let's do it. Let's Release yeah. the reservation or say, eh, okay. I understand, I understand the question. I, I did this talk before, and some people in the audience was working in, in hotels, and they told me, the director do it on the morning, that way. <laughs> Everything, something is better than yeah. that, that thing. They, they are going, uh, the desk people on the hotel are mad calling other hotel from other companies trying to find a room because the guest is on the door and it is a problem. They are doing anyway if you have or if you don't have the algorithm. 
So, uh, and 80% of accuracy, our goal of 40 is better than the know-how of someone in thinking about the, the director, especially because he has just a few view of the problem. They, they can, he can't analyze all the, all the features of, of the time. So, I know it is a sensitive thing. More questions? Hi. I would like to say thank you for the inclusion of uh, ethics section in your talk because I think it's quite important to start to talk about this in, in all the data that we are doing. And I have a question with, the, with that slide. Could you go? The first sentence you say there is no or there is a regulation in Spain? There is no regulation. There is no. There is no. But you can get some. That. I'll explain. It is a law thing. Mm -hmm. There is no specific regulation. On flights, there is a European law, but not in, in this kind of hotels and tourism packets and something like that. There's no re a specific regulation about it. You always have, in, in the Spanish law, the right to claim damages, but there is not a, a specific process to do it fast and easy. That's why. Maybe there are different uh, regional regulations. There are a kind of, I know in, in Balear there's something, but it's not, it's not what we put. Why not? It's fun. Any other questions? questions? Have you ever suffered an overbooking? <laughs> I suffered, I suffered from yeah. booking once, but it was not in a hotel, it was a flying, but I had this all <clears throat> Experience to share? Thank you. Um, I have two curious questions. Uh, the first one is the, how do you use surnames to, to guess the, the origin of the, mm -hmm. of the person? And second one, it's a personal question, like how do you end up from law to analytics? The, that is so, another uh, talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, the first one, there's a um, data set of names and also of surnames and the probability of the being of one country and we process the surnames on the database and use that variable. I, know, I think we use the top three probability countries that you came from. And we also try to use the agenda. And it is also a, an ethic question. If we, if we can use the agenda to understand the cancellation behavior. We reject it because it doesn't affect, hopefully, this time. <laughs> and the other question, uh, Maybe one day I, did, I, I will do a talk about my professional change. But I, as I can say, I studied law and business administration, so I know some statistics, and I'm pretty curious. And I went to Django Girls, which is going to be on September this year, in Python S, and also came to, to Python and meet nice people who teach me a lot. And then magic happens. <laughs> More questions? Last question? Anyone has another question? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.